Have you ever wondered who first decided to document the history of England? In the 7th century, a boy was born in Jarrow, South Tyneside, England, who would grow up to be known as Venerable Bede, the father of English history. In the year of 673, a child was welcomed into the world, his future yet unwritten, much like the history of his homeland. The child was named Bede, a simple name for a boy who would go on to accomplish extraordinary things. At the tender age of seven, Bede's life took a dramatic turn when he was handed over to the monastery of Monk Wearmouth. This was not an uncommon practice during this time. Families often entrusted monasteries with their children's education and spiritual development. For Bede, this marked the beginning of a lifelong commitment to learning and the monastic life. The monastery provided a fertile ground for young Bede's intellectual curiosity. Here, he immersed himself in the study of scriptures, Latin, and the natural world. His days were filled with prayer, contemplation, and rigorous study. But it was not just the thirst for knowledge that set Bede apart. It was his dedication, his unwavering commitment to learning, that truly distinguished him. Bede's passion for learning was matched only by his devotion to the monastic life. He embraced the discipline, the solitude, and the spiritual journey that came with his vows. He saw the monastery as a sanctuary, a place where he could delve into the mysteries of the world and the divine. Bede was not just an ordinary monk, he was a seeker of truth, a chronicler of time, a man with an insatiable curiosity about the world and a deep love for his homeland. He dedicated his life to understanding the past, to piecing together the story of his people, to preserving the history of England for future generations. An ordinary man from Jarrow, England, embarked on a journey that would shape the course of English history. A beacon of light in the dark ages, the father of English history. What does it take to become a scholar in the seventh century, you might ask? For Bede, it took the guardian of Abbot Seolfrith, a man renowned for his intellect and devotion to the scriptures. Bede's education began in the monastic school at Jarrow, where he learned the languages of Latin and Greek. His proficiency in these tongues was not just a mark of his intelligence, but a testament to his dedication. In a time where literacy was a luxury, Bede's mastery of these languages was akin to holding a key to vast realms of knowledge. But Bede was not just a linguist. His education extended to the Holy Scriptures, where he delved deep into the rich tapestry of biblical tales and teachings. His understanding of the scriptures was not just surface level. He sought to comprehend the deeper meanings, the moral lessons, and the divine wisdom they embodied. His interpretations were insightful, nuanced, and often pioneering, setting the groundwork for future theological discourse. At the tender age of 19, Bede's intellectual prowess and spiritual maturity were so profound that he was ordained as a deacon, a significant religious role usually reserved for men at least 25 years old. This was a testament to his extraordinary abilities and the respect he commanded among his people. His ordination was more than just a religious ceremony. It was a recognition of his scholarship, his deep understanding of the scriptures, and his commitment to the monastic life. His early ordination also brought new responsibilities. As a deacon, Bede was not just a student, but a teacher, a mentor, a spiritual guide. His role extended beyond the confines of the monastery, impacting the wider community, influencing minds, and shaping the course of religious thought. So, what did it take to become a scholar in the seventh century? For Bede, it took dedication, intellect, and an insatiable thirst for knowledge. But it also took a deep love for the scriptures, a profound understanding of their teachings, and a commitment to sharing this wisdom with others. By the age of 19, Bede was not just a monk, but a deacon, a scholar. How does one transition from a scholar to a teacher? This question brings us to an important phase in the life of Venerable Bede. At the age of 30, Bede was ordained as a priest, a role that would not only deepen his spiritual journey, but also satiate his thirst for imparting knowledge. Bede's monastic life was not confined to the solitary pursuit of knowledge. It was at the heart of the Jero Monastery that this scholar-priest embarked on his journey as an educator. His passion for teaching was as profound as his love for learning. He believed that the light of knowledge was not to be hoarded, but shared, illuminating the path for others. 
A classroom in the 7th century was a far cry from what we know today. Yet Bede's teachings transcended the limitations of time and space. With limited resources, he taught a wide range of subjects, from theology and history to the natural sciences. His lessons were not mere dissemination of facts, but a holistic approach to understanding the world. Bede was not a teacher who merely stood at the front of a class. He was a mentor who walked alongside his students, guiding them, encouraging them, and challenging them. His commitment to his students was unwavering. He believed that every student had the potential to learn, to grow, and to contribute to society. His dedication to learning was lifelong. Even as he aged, Bede never ceased to be a student. He continued to read, to write, to question, and to explore. His insatiable curiosity was not dampened by the passage of time, but rather, it seemed to intensify. Bede's role as a teacher was not just about imparting knowledge, but also about inspiring a love for learning. He nurtured curious minds, fostered critical thinking, and instilled a sense of wonder in his students. His teachings were not confined to the walls of the monastery, but echoed through the corridors of time, influencing generations of learners. Bede was not just a scholar, but also a dedicated teacher, always willing to share his knowledge. His legacy continues to inspire us, reminding us that knowledge is a gift to be shared, a light to be spread, and a journey to be embarked upon together. So, how does a teacher become a historian? First, let's turn our focus to one of Bede's most significant achievements, the ecclesiastical history of the English people. This masterpiece is considered the first comprehensive history of England, providing a detailed account of the nation from its earliest days to the year 731. But what set Bede apart was his approach. He was meticulous in sourcing his information, and he made it a point to verify each detail. He scrutinized every piece of information, cross-referencing them with other sources to ensure their accuracy. Bede was not just a collector of stories, he was a rigorous investigator of truth. Interestingly, Bede's method was not just about gathering facts. He was equally concerned with providing a balanced perspective. He didn't just recount the victories and high points of English history, but also its struggles and low points. He presented a complete picture, one that was as honest as it was comprehensive. Moreover, Bede's commitment to accuracy was unwavering. He recognized that history was not just about the past, but also about the future. He understood that his writings would serve as a foundation for future generations to understand their heritage. And so he made sure that every detail was as accurate as it could be, knowing that any error, no matter how small, could distort the understanding of future generations. Bede's other works also bear the same hallmark of meticulousness and commitment to accuracy. His treatise on chronology, De Temporum Ratione, is a testament to his painstaking approach to historical research. He also wrote several commentaries on the Bible, demonstrating his thorough understanding of religious texts and their historical context. Yet, Bede was not just an academic. He was a man of faith, and his works reflect his deep belief in the divine. His writings are infused with a sense of wonder and reverence for the world and its creator. His history of the abbots and lives of the holy abbots are examples of this, as they delve into the lives of religious figures with the same rigor and respect he applied to his historical works. Bede was a historian, but he was also a scholar, a teacher, and a man of faith. His approach to history was not just about recording facts, but about understanding the world and its workings. He didn't just document history. He sought to understand it, to learn from it, and to share its lessons with others. And this is perhaps the most important aspect of Bede's work. He didn't just create a record of events, he created a framework for understanding history. His meticulous approach, his balanced perspective, and his commitment to accuracy set the standards for historical research, shaping the field of history as we know it today. Bede's work was more than just a chronicle of events. It was a commitment to truth, accuracy, and objectivity. So, what impact did Bede's work have on English history? Well, to say that Bede's influence was monumental would be an understatement. His work left a lasting imprint, not just on English history, but also on the English language and the church. His writings served as a cornerstone, shaping how subsequent historians approached their craft. 
They look to Bede's meticulous methods, his commitment to accuracy, and his thoughtful interpretation of events. His historical narratives, teeming with rich details and insightful perspectives, became a model for future historians. In the realm of linguistics, Bede's contributions are equally profound. It was through his writings that the English language found its first significant documentation. Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People was written in Latin, but he made it a point to include several passages in Old English. These passages are among the earliest surviving written examples of the English language, providing linguists with invaluable insights into its early form and structure. But that's not all. Bede's influence extended to the church as well. His theological writings were instrumental in shaping the church's understanding of its history and its place in the world. His works not only chronicled the spread of Christianity in England, but also provided a thoughtful analysis of the church's teachings. Bede's writings, infused with his deep faith and his intellectual rigor, helped the church articulate its beliefs more clearly and effectively. In recognition of his profound contributions, Bede was canonized as a saint by the Catholic Church in the 9th century. But the church didn't stop there. In the late 19th century, Bede was declared a doctor of the church. This title, bestowed upon only 36 individuals throughout history, is a testament to Bede's enduring influence on Christian thought. It's a recognition of the depth of his theological insight and the span of his scholarly contributions. Bede's legacy, therefore, is multifaceted. He's remembered as a pioneering historian, a linguistic trailblazer, and a theological luminary. His work has shaped our understanding of English history, language, and the church in ways that are difficult to quantify. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of Bede's legacy is its longevity. More than a thousand years after his death, his work continues to be read, studied, and admired. His influence can still be felt in the classrooms of historians, in the studies of linguists, and in the prayers of the faithful. Bede's life was a testament to the power of scholarship, the importance of intellectual curiosity, and the value of historical understanding. His legacy is a reminder that our past, no matter how distant, continues to shape our present and our future. Bede's contributions to English history, language, and the church are immeasurable. Why does Bede's work still matter today? Bede was a scholar whose intellectual curiosity led him to master numerous disciplines. From theology to astronomy, his expansive knowledge made him a sought-after teacher, educating generations of monks in his monastery. Bede's legacy is profound. His work has shaped English history, providing a comprehensive and accurate account of the early English people. His approach to history has set a standard for historians worldwide, emphasizing the importance of thorough research, corroboration of sources, and objective reporting. In a world where misinformation can spread like wildfire, Bede's dedication to truth is a reminder of the historian's responsibility to present accurate and unbiased accounts. But why does history matter? Why does Bede's work still hold significance today? History as we know is not merely a record of the past. It is our collective memory, the thread that connects us to our ancestors, and the compass that guides our future. History helps us understand who we are, where we come from, and where we might be headed. Through history, we learn from our past mistakes and successes, shaping our present actions and future aspirations. It provides context for our world, helping us make sense of the present and informing our decisions for the future. As such, the work of historians like Bede is invaluable. They are the custodians of our past, the narrators of our present, and the seers of our future. Bede's work in particular has shaped English history and identity. His writings have provided a foundation for our understanding of early English society, its beliefs, its struggles, and its triumphs. He has given a voice to a period of history that might have otherwise faded into oblivion. His dedication to his craft has ensured that the knowledge of our past is preserved for future generations. Bede's work is not just a collection of historical facts. It is a testament to the power of knowledge, the importance of truth, and the enduring value of history. His dedication to his craft, his commitment to accuracy, and his passion for knowledge continue to inspire historians today. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up 
and subscribe to Medieval Mysteries as it helps us to continue creating more videos like this. Let us know what you think below about the fascinating history around the Venerable Bede of Jero, England, and we will try our best to reply to you. And if you want to watch more historical videos, then be sure to check out this next video on your screen.